Welcome to the Polish Table with Agnieszka and Friends. And I'm Agnieszka, and today you're flying solo with me today with my friend, Yash the Bean. We're going to be making fasolka po bretońsku, which is baked beans in Poland, along with sauerkraut fritters with our really yummy horseradish wasabi, Polish wasabi sauce, with our garnish of our chives. We're also going to be including bachik meats, bacon, the sausage, kabanose, and all the extra seasonings to go along with it. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to make them. Welcome back to the Polish table. I'm Agnieszka, and today we are going to be making fasolka po bretońsku, baked beans. So this is a very common dish, especially from where I'm from, from Poland, which is Wałbrzych, it's a Wrocław area. And it was kind of like, it was German, it was Germany. And so a lot of those recipes have been passed down and kind of transi transitioned and changed over. So with this, we have, Bacik makes a um, baked bean and tomato sauce which is mindless. You just go pick this up and buy it. But what you can do too is you can pick up some cannellini beans or whatever beans you like and use that as well. So today we're going to be using the bachik. So we're gonna cut up our meat. In that goes um, bacon, sausage, any kind of variety of sausage that you would like. We're gonna chop this up in chunks. This is a smoked, double smoked bacon, which is really good gives it a lot of flavor. We're gonna chunk that up. It is called Boczek Mishlewski, which is a hunter's bacon. And this dish is kind of really, it's, it's good for camping, it's good for, it's kind of like the chili, the Polish chili, which I kind of like to think about it. It's really, really fragrant, it's aromatic, it smells up the house, it is delicious. Put these into a pan that I've got here with a little bit of olive oil just to coat it because the bacon's got enough fat on there to render down. So we're just going to put that right in there. Nice and easy. Very nice. Now we're gonna chop up an onion. The onion will release a little bit of water because onions do. Mix that up so it gets nice and crunchy. It's got a nice little coating to it. There's no specific way to chop the onion, whatever you like. You could do it a little bit thicker, you could do it thinner. Add that right in there. I just love the smell of this. This is so good, so tasty. Very popular dish in Poland for people that are gurale or that live up in the mountains. Very yummy dish. And typically, the most popular bean for this is the yash bean. So in Polish, yash translates to John. It's yashu bean. I love my yashu bean. Me and my yashu bean are gonna be friends today. All right, get that in there. I'm gonna add all the onion because I chopped up some here. Very nice. I'm gonna add a little bit of some salt. All right. Let that get crispy. Let the onions get a little bit clear. Now, you can also go to the store and you can pick up the seasoning, the pre-seasoning that you can put in for the dish, kind of like what is in this jar, but you have it in a packet. So, all you do is just cut up your meats and then you just add that on there. Very easy dish, super easy. And it's a winner, it is super, super tasty. Everybody's gonna like it. Who doesn't like beans, right? Who doesn't like yashu? Add some sausage. This is also smoked as well. I like them in chunkier pieces. It's just a little bit more tasty. You really get the taste of that sausage. 
And the beans and the tomato sauce will just soak it up. It's delicious. The first time I had fasolka po bretonsko, I was in Poland, and my aunt was making it, but she was making it in her crock pot. And I walked into the house and I said, oh my God, it smells so good. I go, Soto, yes, what is this? And she goes, it's fasolka po bretonsko. And I said, what? She goes, it's baked beans. And I thought, well, let me take a look at this. And it is a fragrance that I'll never forget. And I love to do this, especially when you're camping or if you're in the fall or if you're tailgating. It's, it's just, it's a, it's a hit. You want the sausage also to kind of get a little bit of a, of a thickness on the skin, a little bit of a char, not too much. Perfect. And then we'll cut up some cabanose. Cabanose are kind of, it's a smokier, skinny sausage, kind of like a Slim Jim, I kind of think of it. It's a Polish Slim Jim. This is very meaty eaten with bread, in a bowl, dunk a chino your bread in there. It's comforting, it's tasty. We'll do one more, because I like sausage. I love cabanose. I remember going to the Broadway market and, you know, would, would walk in and Mr. Lupus would hand over and say, Jean Dabre, here you go, Agnieszka. And he'd hand me um, a cabanos, and I would be shopping with my mom and eating my cabanosik. Okay, so this is going to saute a little bit. We don't want to burn it, burn it. All right, so now I am going to take my pot and I'm gonna have, I'm gonna open up our bachik, yash pomidora. Look how beautiful that is. It smells so good and it's done for you. It doesn't take that much time. You just simply put it right in. And these beans are so beautiful. They're nice and big. It's kind of like a butter bean, if you will. But you can use any other kind of bean that you want. But this is so yummy. It, would, it soaks up and just kind of absorbs the sausage and the bacon. It's really, really good. I want to bring that up to a little bit of a boil. Now, I always add a little bit of tomato sauce just to kind of give it that extra, extra taste to it. Plus, it makes it feel like a chili. So mix that right in there. Stir that around. It smells so good. I'm going to add a little bit of sugar, because sugar makes everything better. A little bit of sugar. Because you got to zhuzh up your beans. I mean, Bachik does it for you, but you got to make it your own, right? You want to make it like I made this dish. This is mine. And I love bay leaves. They just give an extra flavor to the food. You don't eat them because they're not really, really tasty, but they do give a nice taste to the, to the beans. I'm going to do a little bit of caraway. Just a little sprinkle, a little dash. Makes you feel like you're eating rye bread. Okay, let's mix that up in there. Now this can be done also in a crock pot if you want to, or an Instapot, or you could just put this on your stovetop and just have away with it. The longer it sits, the better it is. And let's move this around. Oh, the bacon smells so good. So good. So then what we're going to do, once it gets a little bit more crunchier, the skin gets a little bit, we don't want it burnt though. We're gonna add that in. But also, last but not least, paprika. So I'm gonna put this on here. And this paprika is not sweet. This is the one that's a little bit sharper. It's a little bit sharper. So it gives you that extra zing, gives you the heat, the heat that you want. And you take a bite out of something and you're like, oh, this is no big deal. This is no big deal. And then it hits you and you're like, oh, give me some water. Give me some bread, give me a glass of milk, give me something. All right, move this around, perfect, perfect. And then you're gonna add that right into your fasolka. Yashu is having some friends coming for a party. All right, I'm going to put this down right over here. We're gonna mix that up. 
Now at this, I like to simmer it on the stove top for a little bit, but you do want to preheat your oven to about 350 and put it in there for about 20 minutes and let all those flavors marry. And it is delicious. I add a little bit more paprika because I like it a little bit sharper. I want this dish to be remembered when people try and eat it. I say, oh, you made those beans and they were, oof, they were so good. Yeah, they were good. You can do the sweet paprika in there if you want to, if you want to be on the milder side, but this one gives it an extra zing to it. It gives you that heat, like I said, it's so good. Serve this with some bread, butter. Oh, delicious, delicious. Just add a little bit more sugar on there. Y voila, pasol capo bretonsco. And I didn't have to soak the beans. I just picked up a jar from Bachik, already done for me, easy peasy, and then you just make it your own. And this is really, really delicious paired with potato pancakes. And today I'm going to be making it with sauerkraut fritters. And we'll put this on top of there. So stay tuned and you'll see how yummy it is. Welcome back to the Polish Table with Agnieszka and Friends. I'm Agnieszka and we are going to start making our fuczki, which are sauerkraut fritters. So with this, we will be using our bachik sauerkraut with the carrots. I like the one with the carrots because it just, it's sweeter. It's a little bit tastier. So it's well packed. You need about two cups. I'm not going to use a measuring cup because I kind of know. I'm just going to place it on my cutting board, pull it out. And I love sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is my favorite. I could just eat it straight from the jar. I do eat it straight from the jar. It's delicious. And so even though this is really, really, really fine already, I want to chop this up a little bit more and make it a little bit finer. So this is similar to um, potato pancakes, if you will but there's just no potatoes in here. It's just the sauerkraut. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this up very, very fine. And I don't even need to drain it really because it's perfect the way it is. It's not soupy, it's just, it's perfect. The vinegar and the salt in here is just fine. Dice it up really, really small, really, really fine. Do the other side. Perfect. Watch your fingers so you don't cut them. You need all 10 of them, I promise. This dish is typically found in um, the mountains of Bishadze, which is where the Gurale are, the Carpathian Mountains. Very common. And it's a vegetarian dish, so you can make this as light as you want. So we're gonna put this in a bowl. Same concept as potato pancakes. I'll put that right in here. Perfect. Ślicznie. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, I already have like saliva going down my throat because I just love the way it smells. You could taste it just by the vinegar. Okay, we are going to add some margarine. We're going to zhuzh it up like that. We're gonna do a little bit of salt, just a little bit. And we're gonna put our egg in here. One whole egg, perfect. Put the shell back in there. And then we're gonna use some flour. So, add your flour, about a cup and about a cup of milk. We're gonna mix this up together and you'll know the consistency of what you want. Same idea as a, as a potato pancake. Look at that. And you'd say, oh my gosh, a sauerkraut fritter? Really? A patty? Who's going to eat this? Oh, trust me. It is so good. Okay. So it's getting kind it's too, it's a little too wet. So I'm going to add a little bit more flour in there as your guide. There you go. Mix it up a little bit more. Perfect. 
Now you can make these um, like a potato pancake where they're a little bit bigger, like a pancake, or you can make them when they're like just tiny little, tiny little ones, little bites. A little bit more flour, not too much. Perfect. I'm gonna add a little bit more margarine. Okay, looks good, smells good. We're gonna add some caraway seeds in here. If you don't have caraway, fennel is fine as well. Just gives it a different kind of taste to it. Again, you feel like you're eating rye bread. Always reminds me of Cohen's rye bread with caraway seeds. All right, and in a pan here, I've got some regular vegetable oil getting hot. You don't wanna use olive oil because olive oil just doesn't reach that temperature like vegetable oil does. Looks good. Okay. I'm gonna take a little spoon. I'm gonna measure it about spoon size like that. Just like that. And I'm gonna lay it in. Ooh, look at that. I like them a little bit smaller. Then I could eat more. Perfect. You don't wanna crowd them. Just want to keep them playing nicely in the playground together. Otherwise, they'll kind of get together and clump up into one. See, it's already starting to move around. It is such a light dish. It's so good. Sometimes you don't want to have meat for dinner. You just want to have something with no meat in it. And this is perfect to use to top with the, um, the baked beans or you could do sour cream with chives, or you could do sour cream with horseradish and a little bit of rosemary. The possibilities are endless. It depends just what you want. Okay, add that right in there. We're gonna take a look at what they look like on the bottom. Just a little bit, they need to be golden brown. Then you know you're in your sweet spot with your fritters. But you don't want them burned, you want them to be light, light and flaky. Let that sit there for a second. I'm gonna get a plate so that we are ready to put them on. Right there. All right. I tend to use a fork as an extra friend because I always splash the grease on myself. So I flip it over just like that. Perfect. And these are so tasty. They're crunchy on both sides. And then there's that extra little sauerkraut. You think to yourself, this, this is a potato? No, it's not a potato. It is delicious. It's sauerkraut. And you can do so many things with sauerkraut. You can smell it. The vinegar is so tasty. I love when the edges get a little bit burned, just a little bit. Oh yeah. So if you're ever shopping and you think to yourself, oh, I need to get some sauerkraut, Bachi has several different versions. They've got the ones with the carrots, without. They even have a bigos that's jarred already. And you can become very creative with sauerkraut. And it's a natural probiotic. It's good for you. Let's smush that down just a little bit. See that? It's getting nice and crunchy on the outside. You can make smaller size ones too. So let's see if we can make a smaller size one. Just to see, just to show, you can make them bite-sized. So about a fork full. I'm gonna pop that little guy in there. There you go. Love it. Love me some fuchki. Isn't that funny? They're called fuchki. Who, who thinks of these names? It's crazy how different regions have different names for things. It's very, very fun. I'm like, what is a fuchki? Well, here you go. We're gonna flip this guy over. I think the smaller they are, the more you wanna eat. And these are totally fat-free. Totally fat-free. They're a free food. Just kidding. And like I said, instead of the caraway, if you don't have caraway seeds, you could definitely use some fennel. You could use anise in that kind of category of the seasonings. 
it changes as a, it just changes the flavor of the, the pancake. You could use regular sauerkraut without the carrots, and then you could add certain things in there. You could add an onion in here if you want, or extra garlic. I like to do either it's gotta be garlic or it's gonna be an onion. I never do both because it's always, it feels like it's always so overpowering. So that's what I like to do. Look how beautiful that is. It's golden, it's light, flaky. Can't wait to sink my teeth into this. Oh yeah. All right, these are looking really, really good. So I'm going to transfer them over onto the plate. And then we're going to garnish them with this special sour cream wasabi sauce that I got. So stay tuned and we will show you how to plate them. Welcome back to the Polish table with Agnieszka and friends. And today I have made some fuczki, which are sauerkraut fritters, along with our fasolka po bretońsku, which is our baked beans. And I'm going to be plating them and how it would be served. So I have been pan frying these fuczki for a little bit so that it's nice and brown on the outside, golden. And we are just going to plate them on our plate. And I'm going to whip up a sour cream horseradish sauce. Bacik makes a delicious horseradish. It's just a sharp one, it's a zinger. I call it the Polish wasabi. It's a treat, it's really, really good. Okay, so I've got my sour cream. I use a light sour cream because I'm trying to be a good girl. And so what we're going to do is, this is the bacik horseradish. Prawdziwik szan tatry. And so I am going to add Depends on how strong you want it to be, how you want your nostrils to flare. I like it a little extra. So I'm gonna do about two forkfuls of this right inside here. And we are going to whip it up. Stir it in. Oh yeah. Look how nice. Smells so good. All right. I'm going to add just a little bit of dill in here. And we don't have to be perfect to chop it, just kind of stick it in there, it gives it a little taste. I'm going to mix that in. Schlichnie, beautiful. Mm, smells so good. And we are going to place it right on top of our fuczki, our little sauerkraut fritter. I'm gonna do two this way. And then I'm going to add the fasol capo breton school, which are our baked beans. And we are going to put that on the fritter as well, which is so good. To add a little bit of the bacon on top with the beans, our Yashu beans. He's our friend. He's our good friend. And do a little bit more on this one. We're gonna take some chives, chop them up, just like this. There we go. I love chives, it makes it fresh, light. Place a little bit of the sour cream on here, and then you just garnish. Oh, how beautiful. Tasty, colorful, so good. So let's give it a try. Fuczki with our horseradish sauce, our little Polish wasabi. Nice and fluffy on the inside, crunchy on the outside. And you'd never know that it was sauerkraut. So good. The meat in the fasolka, add a nice little extra flavor to the sauerkraut. Fritters, look at that, all nice and crispy and golden. Delicious, and so easy to make. Really, you just open up a jar. So if you want the recipes, please take a look at my Facebook page, Agnieszka, at the Pol Polish Table with Agnieszka and Friends. 
Let me know what you think, any ideas, suggestions, or share your recipes that you have. I'd love to see them. Thank you for joining me at the Polish table. Smacznego.